Hey guys, welcome back to another Jesse Tutorials. Uh, now, so far we've covered a lot of stuff like request parameters, uh, query parameters, request headers, post body, and that kind of stuff. Um, and we've played around about with the fake database, which is a, just an array in memory. So this database gets cleared up um, and dies every time you restart the application, which is not very good if you're writing a production grade application. So to remedy that, you have to use a database. Right. And there's a lot of options for database. You can use PostgreSQL, you can use MySQL, you can use MongoDB, you can use Neo4j, you can use loads of stuff, right? For this tutorial, or for this for this mini series in fact, we'll cover MongoDB and how to connect MongoDB from Express. Uh, and that's what we're going to cover in this specific t t tutorial, is just a connection bit. In the next one we'll cover schemas and then uh, stuff after that. And, so this entire mini-series is going to be about Mongoose and Mongoose only. Right, so what is Mongoose? Mongoose is a ODM system. It's, um, it's basically object modeling for MongoDB. And what it does is it connects to your database, reads all the um, collections and objects and stuff, and it parses them and it creates models. And so you have to tell it what, uh, what the schema is for the object that you want. So you say if you've got a collection, if you've got a MongoDB collection called cats, and if each cat has a name and age, then you have to define a model here, and then you connect to the cats thing, and then it automatically reads the cats and finds out and matches the models, and then allows you to uh, bind the MongoDB objects to your local objects. So, like our request object here, which is which contains a property called body. Um, this thing in MongoDB will be like, um, so using Mongoose, if, say for instance, this was a cat object, uh, if, and this was a name, then you can access cat.name, and then you can do cat.save, and it's, it's, it, it just makes the whole thing very easy. You don't have to deal with queries, and you don't have to deal with a um, lot of stuff. Uh, you do have to deal with queries, but not a lot, so uh, it's good. Right, so let's get started. How do you connect, or how do you get mongoose? Well, first of all, you need to define it. So let's do var mongoose equals require mongoose. Yeah. Uh, so we're requiring the Node.js module, which has to be defined in package.json as usual. Uh, and we know it's not. But just to double check, it's not, right? So we need to install it first. So let's quit the server. And just do npm install mongoose. Now this process could take a bit of time. Oops, hang on. Cancel. Uh, I forgot my save. <laughs> now this process could can take a bit of time because uh, it depends on how fast your internet connection is and how fast your computer is. On Raspberry Pi, this takes quite a bit of time because it's not very powerful. But on this machine, it's well, it took just a second. So not bad. Right, so once it's installed, just double check. Uh, so we've got Mongoose version 4.1.5, right? Go back to index. Now this should work, so now we can save this. But this alone won't work. You need to tell Mongoose what database you want to connect and where your database is and what, uh, what uh, collection you want to start with. Right. So let's go with uh, mongoose.connect. And you need to pass in a string, uh, which is a connection string. Now this is not your HTTP string because HTTP defines the HTTP protocol for communication over that um, channel. Because we're talking to MongoDB, the protocol is MongoDB. So MongoDB. Yep. And then you provide your host. Host. If you have a remote server, then this will be the uh, the IP address or um, host name of that remote server. Uh, but because we're only going to play locally, and I've already got my uh, MongoDB local instance running here. This can just be um, local host slash test. Uh, so we're going to connect to the test database on my local host, right? Excellent. Now let's, um, well, let's consider another thing. Say, for instance, you've got several databases running on different ports on your local machine. How would you provide ports? Well, like you, know, like you normally do in HTTP URLs. So consider this HTTP URL for a minute. You've got your, you've got your protocol, you've got your host name, you've got your colon, and then the port name. But if your website is running on port 80, which most of the websites are, you won't provide this, right? 
So the default port doesn't need to be specified. But if it's anything other than default, you have to specify it by colon and then the port name, uh, port number, and then you go slash and then your and then your entire request. Same thing here. The default port is two seven zero one seven. I think. Let me just confirm that two seven zero one seven. There we go. Uh, so I don't need to provide that port number here. But if it was something other than two seven zero one seven, then I would have to provide it here. Another thing, you can enable in encryption. Um, so, but we 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 will be covering encryption later on in the tutorial. So uh, for now, we'll just cover uh, and go through the local stuff, which is just normal HTTP. Uh, well, normal unencrypted connection to MongoDB database and um, just a very simple connection to localhost and the test database. Um, if you installed, if you're concerned with, oh, I, I, I may not have the test database, uh, don't worry about it. Your um, default MongoDB install will come with test database and you won't have to worry about it. Right, so this concludes our first chapter on the Mongoose series. Um, in the next one, we'll cover more in depth about how to be defined data and stuff like schema in models. So I'll see you then. Take care. Bye bye.